Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. I'd like you to turn to Ephesians uh, chapter 3. It's good to be with you today and God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your blessings and your grace. And Father, we pray as we read your word that you bless us now in Jesus' name and for your glory. Bless all those that hear these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which has given me towards, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, where I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am blessed than the least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him, Wherefore I desire that you faint not as my tribulation for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth the knowledge, that you might be filled with the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory of the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. I want to talk about three things revealed, <clears throat> a ministry revealed, a mystery revealed, a love revealed. First of all, a ministry revealed. There's a film came out called Sully and it's about a guy who was uh, a pilot on a plane and he, he saved this plane from crashing. He landed in, 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 a, in a river somewhere in America and um, at the end of at the end of the film, he just said, you know, I did what I, you know, what I was trained to do. And, you know, we all have a ministry. We all have a calling. And here we see the calling of Paul. We see uh, Ephesians 3, verse 7, he, he was called, wherein I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace given unto me by the effectual working of his power. He was, a, he was called to be a minister. And if you read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5 and 6, if we, if we turn to that, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, Jeremiah uh, chapter 1 verse 5 and 6, 
It says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I adorned thee a prophet unto the nations. So Paul was called, Jeremiah was called, and God has called you to a ministry. Paul's ministry was uh, a humble ministry, uh, Ephesians 3 verse 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints, of the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Unto me who am less than the least. He, he saw himself in a humble situation, in a humble position. If you're going to be a minister, you've got to be humble. If you're going to answer the call in your life, you've got to be a humble person. He was also a person who was not only called, not only was he humble, but he was a person who ministered the word of God. Um, Ephesians 3 verse 8. Unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is the grace given that I should what? Preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick of the dead at the appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, approve, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Paul was called to preach the word of God. And in your calling, you need to be humble, but also you need to bring in the word of God in the call that God has given you to do. What is it God has called you to do? Bring the word of God in that situation. And then your calling is not only to be humble, not only to bring in the word, but it is to pray. 3.14 for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he bows his knee and he prays. And we need to pray. And if you look at 1 Kings 8, 54, Ezra chapter 9, verse 5, Psalm 95, verse 6, and uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, Acts chapter 7, verse 16, these people were people of prayer. So God has called you to a ministry. That ministry, whatever it is, fulfill your ministry. Walk in humility. Make sure you bring in the word of God and make sure you saturate it with prayer. Secondly, so we've looked at a ministry revealed. Now we're looking at a mystery revealed. This is what uh, John Stott, I don't agree with everything John Stott said. And, uh, but this is what he said about the word mystery in the Greek as opposed to the English idea of mystery. In English, a mystery is something dark and obscure, secret, puzzling. What is mysterious is inexplicable, even incomprehensible. The Greek word mysterion is different, however. Although still a secret, it is no longer closely guarded, but open. More simply, mysterion is a truth hereafter hidden from human knowledge or understanding, but now disclosed by revelation of God. So a mystery is something where it was hidden but now has been disclosed by God. And we see the word mystery being used in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3. How that by the revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words. You can look at verse 6. That the Gentiles shall be fellow heirs under the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel... Sorry, verse 9, and made to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. The mystery is that Jew and Gentile can be saved. Once it was just the Jew, but now Christ has broken down the wall of petition between Jew and Gentile. Romans 11.25, let's go there. Romans 11.25 Romans 11.25 
For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit, and blind, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. The gospel is for Jew and Gentile. And you can read Acts chapter 11, verse 1 to 18. Have a read of that if you get a chance. What does that mean in application? In application, the gospel is for everybody. There should not be a group of people that you're prejudiced against where you don't want to share the gospel. You can't say the gospel's not for the drug addicts, the gospel's not for black people or white people, the gospel's not for these people or that people. No, the gospel is for everybody. You should be willing to go to everybody. Churches that are exclusive and will only target a certain type of people or will only reach the old people or will only reach the young people. No, the gospel is for everybody. We should spread the gospel indiscriminately, whether it be gay or lesbian, whether it be black or white, whether it be Jew or Gentile, whether it be Muslim, whether it be Buddhist, whether they be young, whether they be old, whether they be clever, not so clever. No, we spread the love of Christ to all people. A mystery revealed. And then thirdly, a love revealed. Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell had a soldier in his army. And this soldier had a girlfriend who really, really loved him. And one night, the soldier was on guard and he fell asleep. And his officer found him and that meant he was court-martialed. He was brought before the courts and the judge was sentenced him to death. His girlfriend, who was distraught, who loved him dearly, tried to bribe soldiers, tried to bribe the judge, tried to bribe everybody to try and get him off, but it didn't work. And that night they brought the soldier to the shooting range and they could only shoot when the bell rang. There was a church bell in the village that rang and when it rang then they could shoot. Now this girl who loved this man who was about to be shot went to the bell tower and tied herself to the bell so when the bell went to ring it didn't ring. And the soldiers were waiting with the rifles and they couldn't shoot because they didn't hear the bell ring. So they put the guy back in the cell. The next day, Oliver Cromwell heard about this. And about the love of this girl for this young man. And he said, well, if, she, if, he, if, if he has loved that much, let him go. And he gave him a pardon. We see... The amazing love of God that he went to great lengths to save us. Ephesians 3, 16. That we should grant you according to the riches of the glory to, the, to be strengthened with might by the his spirit in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And, and Christ came and died on that cross and he gave his life for you and me and he shed his blood for you and me and he went to that cross That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. That you're being rooted and grounded in love. In what? In the love of Christ. That love that went to the cross for us. We turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14. For the love of Christ constrain us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. He died for all, i.e. he died for his people. Meaning he, he, he gave his life for you. Christ gave up his life that you may live. He gave up his comfort that you may have comfort. 
the story of a young boy, uh, Paul from Rhodesia, 17, 8, 16, 17, goes to a missionary and wanted to tell him that I know the love of Christ and the missionary was too busy putting his books up and he didn't want to listen but the boy started to tell him about this love that he knew in his life that he knew the love of Christ and the missionary started to listen because it was an interesting story. When he was a boy of five years of age, his father died. Now his mum had to marry one of, uh, one of her husband's brothers. But the thing is, she was a Christian. She wanted to bring up her boy as a Christian. And if she married one of these men, one of these brothers, she wouldn't be able to bring him up as a Christian. And the other thing as well is these men had other wives. So she didn't want to do it, but they beat her blue. They beat her black and blue. And she left the village. Then she came back for her son. They beat her black and blue. Eventually she left and Paul never saw her again. But Paul, in the midst of the pain, became a child of God. He became saved. One day, he, went, he, he was living with one of his uncles who had, who, who had adopted him and, and he's, he's living with his aunties. His uncle's got many wives and they're, they're living there. And he, he, they didn't have any children. So the little boy, Paul, was going to in, inherit all the land if something happened to the man, to uh, his uncle. Well, the aunties didn't like that. One day, one of the aunties is in in the kitchen and she's boiling a big big pat, a pan of hot water the boy's in the kitchen and he's looking thinking auntie's making some cookies or something she gets the water she pours it all over him the boiling hot water misses his face but scalds all his body they also try to poison him time and again they try to poison him eventually he runs away he runs away and he gets to another uncle and he begins to work for this uncle picking tea He's only six, seven years of age. He's picking tea in the hope that he can pay to go to school. The uncle takes the money for himself and pays to, so he can have more wives. So Paul does extra work so he can earn the money after he's given money to his uncle to go to school. This boy went through terrific suffering. Eight, Romans 8, 35. But he could say this, he wanted to testify to the missionary. I know the love of God. What shall we separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus our Lord. He knew the love of God in his life. And in your pain and in your brokenness, you need to just come to the cross. You need to lean it at, leave it at the cross. You need to put it on the cross. Say, Lord, I'm broken. Lord, I'm needed. Lord, I'm in pain. Lord, I've been abused. Lord, I've been, Lord, they've, they've annihilated me. They've broken me. They've destroyed me. But Lord, I can't cope with it. But Lord, I bring it to the cross. And you need to leave it on the cross. And as you leave it on the cross, God will clean you. God will wash you. God will give you grace. He'll give you power. He'll give you joy. He'll give you his love. Let the cross deal with your pain. Let the cross deal with your hurt. Let the cross deal with your disappointments. Deal with you. Put it on the cross. Meditate on the cross. Of what Christ did for you. And as you do that. As you do that. One John chapter four, verse ten and eleven. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. The Greek propitiation is appeasement of the wrath of God. 
Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be a propitiation for our sins. Here it is. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Let us pray that God will give us more love in our lives. So we've seen a ministry revealed. God has called you, be humble, put the word of God at the heart of this ministry that God has called you and pray. Number two, number two, a mystery revealed. The gospel is not for the Jews only, but for the Jew and the Gentile. It is for all people. Don't be proud against a group of people but preach the gospel, share the gospel to all people. And number three, the, 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 a love revealed, the love of Christ. Now let us turn in our final verse to Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. Two Timothy uh, chapter four verse eight. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the is it two Corinthian uh, two Timothy chapter four verse eight. Yeah. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love is appearing. Let us fix our eyes upon him. The days are getting evil. The times are getting dark. We need to look to Christ. We need to fix our eyes upon him. That chapter, chapter 3, is a, is, a, is a man who's fixing his eyes on Christ. Let's do that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We confess all our sin. We acknowledge our weakness. We acknowledge, Lord, our pride, our lack of love our lack of faith and our disobedience and we pray that you will forgive us Lord and we just give you the praise, we just give you the glory, we just give you the honour and we just magnify your name Lord and we just give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honour Lord and we just say what a great and mighty saviour you are Lord. We thank you for your goodness, we thank you for your love and we praise you and worship you Lord in your name and for your glory. And Father forgive us our sin, forgive us our failure, forgive us our weakness Lord we look to you and I pray for those who've heard this message. Lord, whatever I've shared to them today, may it be a blessing to them, a help to them, an encouragement to them, and a strength to them in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you and take care. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. Don't forget some good sites to go to. Answering Islam is a good website. Uh, Muslim Journey to Hope is a good uh, website. Um, Jeremiah's doc, uh, Jeremiah Ministries, uh, Legionnaire Ministries, Grace to You Ministries, uh, Desiring God Ministries, Sermon Index, Sermon Audio are some good resources. Sermon Index, Sermon Audio, excellent resources that will really help you in, in your walk with the Lord. Okay, God bless you. <coughs> and my favourite of all time is Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones Recording Trust. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones Recording Trust, absolutely brilliant, fantastic. Well, bless your socks off if you go on there. So I'm, I'm, I, I just uh, thank you for listening. I pray that God will be with you. Pray that you ble God will bless us as we go out and evangelize. And I hope this message has been a blessing to you. So thank you for listening uh, and God bless you. Take care.